guys, um, welcome to another episode of the Sound of Accra podcast. Uh, you already know this is the show where we chat with colorful creatives and entrepreneurs from a Ghanaian heritage or interest. Uh, today I'm joined by Annette. How you doing, Annette Abena? How you doing? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. I've been wanting I've been wanting you for some time. <laughs> You've been yeah. wanting me. I've been wanting you for some time. Not in not in that way. Not in that way. I, I, I see your face, not in that way. But um I've I've had basically what I do is in my show is that I've got this um guest list. Yeah. I've got this like um wish like not wish list, but kind of like my target list, my target guests that I want to have my show. And then obviously I, I had you floating around somewhere. Yeah, I know we were meant to do this like last year or so. But Something it just, like that, it, yeah. It didn't work logistically. So yeah, I'm it happy to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do appreciate you being open to wanting to be in my show. And I think when I first started, like I had nothing. So I just <laughs> built up this repertoire of episodes yeah. and I've got 53 episodes. Like, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Congrats. I know. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're doing season three. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for coming in the show. Um, just to let you guys know, um, if you want the show notes for today's episode, make sure you head over to the soundofacra.com forward slash Annette. That's A double N E double T E. Yeah. There we go. So today's show notes, head over to that website. All right. So you know what? Um let's let's get straight into it. So of course you're growth manager at Semwave and and you're of course the founder of the Diaspora Talks podcast, right? That's correct. Yeah. Excellent, yeah. And I know with the Diaspora Talks podcast, you're more kind of bridging the gap between the diaspora and African businesses and entrepreneurship. Is that more or less more Yeah, less absolutely. It? That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So don't worry, you guys are gonna learn a little bit more about Annette um during the show. But I wanna go straight into remittance. Let's let's go straight into it. So not everyone's familiar with remittance and how it works. Um, let's just let's just walk the audience through a crash course into how remittance works and kind of how you know how it's kind of evolved over the years. So, I mean, my earliest memory of remittance has been um, Western Union. You know, whether it's living in Ghana and just seeing Western Union all over the place, <laughs> or, or whether it's being in the UK and seeing Western Union here and there, you go to this shop, you go to that shop, and there's Western Union. But now, you know, fast forward, we were just flooded with so many remittance apps. I mean, we, we, we're going to get into all the different competitors out there. Um, how have you seen, I mean, from your perspective, being in the industry itself, um, how would you say that? the market or the industry has evolved from the likes of Western Union to what we have now, you know? Yeah. 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 So, well, firstly, I'd make a distinction. Um, when we talk about remittances, just by its very definition, that encapsulates payments in general. Yeah. That's what remittance is, is mm -hmm. payments. Um, what we're specifically talking about when it comes to, when you refer to the likes of Western Union or Semwave mm -hmm. is international remittances. Okay. Um, and so that is essentially when, essentially what we're talking about sending money back home yeah that's what we're familiar with as that as the diaspora yeah remittances in general encapsulates you know your mobile money just general payments even if i go and make a payment um to a shop owner that's that's a form of remittances mm -hmm. but well, what we're talking about right now is international remittances sending money back home mm -hmm. to your loved ones okay. that's what we know of it Okay. Um, so to answer your question directly in regards to you know the whole industry, mm -hmm. so you mentioned Western Union, that yeah. is a legacy brand. That yeah. that um, business was established back in the eighteen hundreds, mm, um, and then it. you yeah, <laughs> and then you had the likes of MoneyGram, which yeah. was established in the nineteen forties. Okay. So you can imagine, like for decades, these are the brands that we know our parents have relied on yeah. when they came to the, the our parents and grandparents um, when they came to this country when the seventies, eighties, nineties. Mm -hmm. uh, etc yeah. um so just by that very thought you can imagine how you know old and archaic this industry has been mm. only up until very recently mm. so i'm sure many people have experienced mm. of you know their parents getting up going to you know a western union shop or even a barber <laughs> shop or a shipping shop yeah i know there's many in tottenham still that's, that's where i'm from <laughs> And you, know, <laughs> and, you know, having like, you know, wads of cash in an envelope and yeah. and standing in a queue to send money and yeah. paying a fee to send this money. Yeah. And then this money taking a few days to get there, if mm. it does in, in any case. Yeah. Um, so that is what the practice has always been for decades. Mm. Um, and like I said, it's only recently we've had this disruption in the industry. Mm -hmm. 
So, incoming the likes of World Dream It. Yeah. Um, the World Dream It was established around 2009. Yeah. Um, established by a Somalian entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. And, of course, he came into the industry thinking, this is crazy. Ish- like, Ishmael, I think his name is. Yes, something. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is crazy. Like, it's sending money to Africa is the most expensive in the world and still is. Um, it costs an average of 9%. Um, to send money to Africa, nine percent more um, than any other place in the in the world, okay. and Africa relies on diaspora remittances more than any other continent, as you can imagine. It's 100%. always the most fragile yeah. and poorest, um, you know, economies that rely mm-hmm. on remittances, yeah. and Africa more so. So, if we look at the stats at the moment, mm-hmm. and this is even till this day, yeah. um, you know, international remittances in Africa surpasses international aid Mm -hmm. it surpasses um foreign direct investment so Mm. we are the biggest investors of the continent people in the diaspora Mm. so um yeah so in comes world dreamer as i was saying yeah um and so they took a low fee model okay um so that again that in itself was a disruption because remember people were sending money and paying like an arm and a leg just to send money home and you know the profile of african diasporas is you know they are immigrants they are coming to a country where most of the time they're on low income yeah and so for it to cost them that much money is is really a disservice it's an injustice yeah, yeah. um and then from there we're seeing you know more players into the market and digitizing yeah what the practice that we we we've always done mm. um and so, yeah, this is where we've got to now, okay. where the likes of Semwave has also come into the market. Mm-hmm. Um, what distincts Semwave from um, others in the market and what was destructive about Semwave's entry in mm-hmm. 2014 yeah. is that as well as, you know, being um, dig- digital, mm-hmm. purely an app, yeah. um, also a no-fee model. So Semwave charges no fees to send um, yeah. to uh, most African countries. Okay. And also we are, are purely on an app. So there's no getting up and going to wherever to send money. Mm-hmm. Um, and also you can do it from the comfort of your home. And most mm-hmm. transfers are sent and received in under a minute. Okay. Um, so, yeah, that's that's where we are at the, in, in the industry. Okay. But I would say, I know you mentioned, you know, there's quite a few competitors and there's so many options. Yeah. But actually, we're still only scratching the surface when it comes to international remittances. And, and yeah. most people are still paying an arm and leg to send money to Africa. Okay. So there's still a lot more to, to do. Hey, guys, this is Adrian with a quick message from our brand new sponsors, Ice Cream and Tea. So, are you a foodie in the UK that finds dessert options on food delivery apps a little bit basic and uninspiring? Well, you need to get yourself some ice cream and ting ice cream and indulge yourself today. They make small batch ice cream tubs with flavors that are rich and inspired by the African continent and the Caribbean. So what are you waiting for? Get some luxury ice cream ordered straight to your door by heading over to icecreamandting.com and enjoy this experience like I am today thank you very much now back to the episode all right so let's talk about the market share because there's so many plays and like you mentioned send wave of course obviously we work um i've used love send wave by the way i've used Yay. it so many times <laughs> so you have a smile on your face yeah. um, but also i've also been tempted the way by other players in the market and you have tap tap send you have um, i mean there's another one that my friend's dad owns i can't remember but it's quite big um, there's remitly, there's transfer wise, there's chipper. I think chippers just entered the market. Uh-huh. There's so many players. Um, would you say what like who who's is it like a distinctive market leader right now, or is that like, like an evenly spread market shit right now between all the players? Or um, is- I think it depends on what you mean by market leader. If you mean like size, like in terms of number of transactions sent, or and or maybe. Turn yes. Turn over transactions sent. You know, I know it's like billions. Of tra- so if you're talking about volumes and yeah. size, yeah, you know it's interesting. The likes of Western Union one and MoneyGram are still the leaders. Is it? And what, why do you find that? Is is that because do you feel like um the. The, the, the huge majority of the demographic of those people are the, the older generation who are not very familiar with tech. A bit of that, yeah. Okay. Um, so obviously, being a purely digital service, um, it does take a lot of education, mm. and you know, 
changing people's behaviors um that you know it's hard to change people's behaviors when they're when they're used to a certain thing that they've been doing for decades Mm -hmm. but as well as that though you know a lot of the disruptions are still quite new so Mm -hmm. Semwave, like i said was founded in 2014 Mm -hmm. and we still we've only just expanded into the likes of asia for example Mm -hmm. there's a lot of ground that we have to cover whereas the likes of western union are pretty much everywhere yeah um and so there's still so much room for us to expand and that's what, exactly what we're doing now and it's probably okay. the same with our other fe- fellow digi- digital apps okay cool um let's i mean while we're on the topic of semwave quite a bit um let, let's kind of go segue into seg- um, semwave so um what markets are you guys in at the moment i know the main market is sub sub saharan africa right? uh-huh. um and um actually before i actually go into it, actually um, what are the most popular countries for remittance in Africa? Is is it still the Ghana, Nigeria, Senegal, um, so, Kenya? Uh, so four? Nigeria actually yeah. makes up like 50% or so it's mad, isn't it? of remittances to, uh, to sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, and the population to go with it. Yeah, the well. population to go with it, the population of the diaspora as well. Yeah. So they probably lead when it comes to, I mean, as far as like, the stats go from like 2019 or 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, they are still the leaders in uh, remittances in terms of volume. Okay. However, there's certain countries, and I, I can't remember off the top of my head, that they take a larger share okay. of the economy's GDP. Mm. So it means that um, in terms of weighted value, it's even more significant. Um, so it's, This is a big deal. Yeah. Like, Contributing to the country's GDP. GDP. Like GD, wow. GDP. Like I said, like it outstrips aid. It outstrips foreign direct what? investment. So, you know, in the media, like there's yeah. so much emphasis on aid and how much yeah. aid, you know, the likes of Africa, the African continent are getting. And mm-hmm. actually remittances, international mm-hmm. remittances coming from the yeah. diaspora dwarfs that. So, and that's not something that is really, you know, highlighted. Okay. It's the hard work of the people in the diaspora that are really supporting these economies. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. That's very interesting. Um, but, I've, but I think you on the, you, I think you have a point there because, um, you know, there's a lot of people in third world countries in Africa, obviously, who, you know, who rely a lot on you know, their relatives or friends abroad, you know, sending them money what, every, every week, every mm-hmm. day, every month. Um, I haven't really been in that position where I've had to send so and so. I don't think many people in our generation have really. Um, and I you'd think... be surprised, like you know. Um, I, I guess yeah, maybe not our generation, but I think at least maybe people, maybe like our parents or yeah, absolutely. That's what like I meant. Yeah. Sending, yeah, yeah, because mm-hmm. I remember being around people and they, they got to send this person money and this person. Yeah, money. my everybody. parents send money yeah. very frequently. Yeah. yeah, so I guess in every house, I think there's at least one or two people that are sending money for, on a frequent basis, like every and just all the time and for example i think with me um for me remittance like i use it to kind of like to just support some people like maybe some pastors down there mm-hmm. and then also obviously i've got some staff members down there and mm-hmm. gone us and the remittance and that's another that's another option so i mean there's so many what what would you say like the main purposes for like remittance obviously apart from just supporting families I mean, is there like a kind of like stats? Is there like kind of, or is it just um, kind of just general? Just yeah, I don't think families? there's any, unfortunately, I, don't, I think the data is quite vague. Vague in that sense. Yeah. Um, so even with SEMWAVE, um, we don't, we don't, what, what, obviously the way in which we market and the purpose of the app is yeah. sending money to your loved ones back yeah. home. Okay. And, you know, that is uh, for support. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, but we know that people send money for different reasons. I mean, yeah. we, we know people have businesses and we know that people are building homes, for yeah. example, or people are even investing, yeah. sending money to themselves. So sending money to their own bank accounts and yeah. mobile wallets. So when they get to this, their country, they, they've, they have money for their endeavors. Yeah. Um, so it completely varies, but I wouldn't say there's any, unfortunately, there's not like enough stats to, to say absolutely. Okay. And then obviously you have to remember there's the whole informal market as well. So mm-hmm. all the figures that I'm saying, this yeah. is just the, what's re- been recorded. <laughs> you know, you know, people still take cash on the plane, right? Yeah. Or they still, you know, get somebody to go and give cash and then swap it and things like that. There's this whole black market around it too. So true, it's true, probably true, even true, double true. what I has been it. recorded. So yeah. Wow. 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 At that's, least. that's quite something. Um, but um, another thing I wanted to talk about as well was the pandemic as well. Um, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. 
Um, I think the pandemic has blown wide open the doors for, for remittance because I think when COVID really hit the scene, I know at least in Ghana, right, um, mm. remittance went up a lot more because people lost jobs or they weren't able to work and things like that. Mm. Um, did you see that impact um, at some way in your end? So it's interesting. So it was actually projected that international remittances will drop mm. um, because of the impact of the, the pandemic. Okay. Because, you know, the idea of... Um, the diaspora and immigrants possibly losing their own income, okay. and you know, thing the financial situations just oh, true. being that makes sense. Quite, yeah, because yeah, they'll get affected in there exactly. As well. So I think the World Bank uh, projected that there would be something like a nineteen percent drop compared to the year before. Okay. Um, and there was actually a bit of a dip, but not as much as was projected. There was a twelve percent dip. Okay. Um, but actually, if you look countries individually mm. um because i said you know nigeria has the the biggest uh percentage of remittance volumes yeah um if you take away nigeria actually most countries increase their remittances wow. um so ghana yeah. you talked about um according to the world bank there was a five percent increase okay. in international remittances and uh like the only reason the reason why nigeria dropped in remittances is because the black market got bigger so mm. and that's because of their own situation with the Nigerian Central Bank. I think that's that's a wider, <laughs> a wider topic. Yeah. But overall, the consensus really it isn't that things dropped as projected. Okay. Because, you know, again, I feel like there's a difference between what the stats say and we know in our behaviours of the diaspora. Yeah. And, you know, there's a whole culture in Africa of, you know, you have to support, well, at least with our parents' generation and grandparents' generation, it's like, oh, you have to support no matter what. Yeah. And so there's always scope for support. As well as that, again, going back to Semwave side of things, mm -hmm. um, there, what I would say, and there isn't any formal stats for this, okay. is that the behaviour that we saw is that, you know, many people then started to change their behaviours and to digitise their sending. Because mm. remember, you know, we talked earlier about certain people being used to just going to certain th um, Western Union and sending money in the cash because yeah. that's what they're used to. Well, but of course, to, yeah. you know, the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. the lockdowns hit and you have yeah. to change your behaviour. You yeah. So once by force you have to educate yourself on how to use this app, which is very simple, but yeah. of course if you're not very tech savvy, mm. it can be quite daunting. Mm. Um, you know, we're seeing, you know, digital apps such as Semwave being yeah. adopted even more so. Mm -hmm. So for us, actually, the pandemic meant, you know, just a rocket yeah. for... Because people have for, to rely more on tech. Exactly. Because obviously, pandemic, social distancing. Well, social distancing, have you're, you have to stay at home. Yeah. Yeah. So someone's telling you the only way you're going to send is to, to use this app. True. Then you discover it and you think, wow, I don't have to pay any fees. Okay. I can do it from the comfort of my home and I'm used to doing this now. Uh-huh. It's going to stick. So there was a correlation between the pandemic and, you know, remittance kind of going up. At least for, digi for, digital, for Yeah, well, the, this is what we saw. Side, yeah, from the yeah. digital side, so, this is okay, what we yeah, saw. Yeah. So, yeah. so as the digital went up, the traditional went down a bit because of the whole kind of contact. Yeah, I mean, I guess that, that's right? the theory. That's yeah. the theory. Um, yeah, the, hypothetically speaking. Hypothetically yeah. speaking, that's what yeah. we're seeing, for okay. sure. Very yeah. interesting. And also one other thing is that Go we on. did start to see, like, the likes of Western Union and other, and MoneyGrams and other traditional players, yeah, they started to invest in their digital apps. Yeah, because it's quite basic. I mean, they, I think they got like a website. I, I'm sure they have an app, right? They, have, they an have an app, app. Yeah. but it's very clunky. It's very, it's not. It doesn't work as well. And this <laughs> is no US shade. Is crap and <laughs> but yeah, no, 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 no. I'm I'm not bringing down anything. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. you know, it's 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 not seamless because mm. again, you know, when you are digital only, and that's the only way. That's your product. Yeah. That's what we invest in. Yeah. Um, and so we make sure that the product we have is is going to be, you know, optimised. Okay. But when you're not, you're not used to optimising that, of course, it's not going to be mm. as good. Um, so, yeah, we're definitely seeing a change mm. in sending behaviours and we're seeing more digitization in mm. the industry. Wow. Wow. That's, that's, quite, that's quite something. Let's move back into Sunwave. Let's keep the spotlight there. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, so talk me through Seth Sunwave. So do you guys have a specific kind of like persona or like an age group you're targeting? Because um, I'm just trying to see where you guys fit in the market. I know you guys are really fast. I think that's one thing I've definitely been, you know, used Sunwave yeah. myself is being really fast and that being just very simple to use. Um, like, do you guys, how, how do you guys see yourself fitting in the market in terms of like next to everybody else? Like, do you go for a specific age group? 
Um, do you try and distinguish yourself by speed or and how do you guys make make money as well? Because obviously there's mm. no fees and in, in some way. Yeah, that's a good question. Others. Yeah. So I'll start with that actually, just okay. to clarify how Semwave actually makes money. Sure. So um like like you correctly said, mm -hmm. we charge a fee. We don't charge a fee, we are yeah. no fee um <laughs> for most countries. Yeah. Um and we, the the way we make money is uh, we make a small profit off the exchange rate. Okay, I think and so. yes, <laughs> um, whereas our competitors charge a fee and also make a profit off the exchange rate. Okay, um, so we only make a profit off exchange rate. Of oh, course, so we, they actually do both. They do both. Okay, yes, interesting. Um, so of course we need to be a sustainable business. We need to make money somehow, okay. but our rates are always competitive. Okay. Um, and that's, that's essentially how so we... So you say that's deceptive. So let's say I'm on, I want, oh, I'm not going to bash any competitors here. Let's keep it unbiased. Okay? <laughs> so let's say I'm on another app and I'm like, oh great. The exchange rate is great. I'm going to use this. Um, and then, oh, it's only like 50p, whatever, to send 200 pounds. They're still making money off me, not just through the charge, um... but also through the exchange rate. I wouldn't say it's deceptive. No, that's business. Yeah, right? I, mean, I mean it's business. But I'm, what I'm saying is that they 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 getting away making money. Those two, I mean that business model mm -hmm. is they they you know they're getting I'm not getting away with it, but but they're able to to use that to make money rather than just sticking with. Um, yeah, I think the question I'm trying to ask is why isn't Sunwave trying to do both? Like because it's not our mission. It's not mission. Um, because okay. it's it's essentially that's why we we're doing what we do. So I, I guess I'll go back to like okay. why Semwave was founded and how it was. Please do. Yeah. So Semwave was founded by um, two social entrepreneurs mm. who were running an NGO in Tanzania. Okay. And obviously, when you're running a business in 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 Africa and you are based elsewhere, you need to send yourself money back and forth. Yeah. And so obviously you also faced a challenge of these high fees that just don't make sense. Yeah. And so to them, they were like, this don't make sense. Like, yeah. why am I spending so much money to send money? And um, so they look looking into, you know, the industry and the business, mm -hmm. they must have realised it doesn't have to be done. Yeah. Um, and also comparing it to how much people send money from to other parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Like I said, it's it's 9% it's an average of nine percent yeah. so exactly so um so yeah so they looked at it and said it didn't make sense yeah and so our mission statement actually is we are on a mission to make sending money as easy and affordable as sending a text mm. and so that completely flies in the face of you know what the industry has been for hundreds of years I understand. um and so to answer your question directly like i said it's yeah. just not in our mission we're not in the business of making people in the diaspora hardworking immigrants spend money to mm -hmm. support their loved ones yeah so as far as possible we okay. charge the minimum fee or no fee at all for most of our countries okay. and you know we make our rate as competitive as possible fantastic that, I mean, that makes a lot of sense now because you, you said that um, a couple of social entrepreneurs started the, um, the business mm -hmm. they're obviously going to have a, a social focused mission yeah. to, be, to do what they're doing which, which which makes perfect sense yeah um this actually popped into my head actually is send wave re recently just raise did you guys raise or did you guys recently just hit a new valuation is it one of those one of those two we were companies? recently acquired, acquired we were recently acquired go. um in 2020 by world remit group oh there you go so yeah there so um we are part of the same parent company mm -hmm which is called Zeps. Okay. Um, we, we've we retained our independent brand, so we're yeah. still the same same wave, but okay. it's just the structure yeah. of the business. There you go. And yes, Zeps as a parent company just okay. raised, um, I can't even remember the amount of money, but yeah, yeah. X amount of money. Great yeah. job. And also I noticed that the same way branding and everything has changed as well. Has that been part of it? Have we changed? The brand, I mean, the branding is definitely, is a lot more vibrant. I think the, you think it's, it's a logo oh, change that's the a branding. Good, that's a good feedback, actually, yeah, yeah. because we did get, change. we did get a new brand in person. So I yeah, think, shout yeah. out to Charlene. She definitely, shout out to Charlene. she definitely worked on that. Yeah, <laughs> um, I noticed yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, good. So well, well done to, to you and everyone in the Sunwave team. I do know some other people that work for Sunwave, so that's you amazing. guys are doing a great job. Um, yeah, you guys are doing a great job. And um, other thing I wanted to say as well is how many transactions do you guys like do a year? Ooh. Um, things like that. How big's how big's like the, the company? Do you guys have people around the world, right? Yeah. Um. So another reason why we can you know you know offer such savings and like 
competitive rates and be fee free for most countries mm -hmm. is because we are a fully remote company. Okay. Um, so we have no physical offices. Okay. Um, our team is fully dispersed across the world. Okay. Um, we're incorporated in That's the great. USA mm. and the UK. Uh, I think, and I think Kenya. Okay. Um, but yeah, we're a fully remote company, fully dispersed. Okay. Um, if I'm honest, I don't have the answer to how many transactions we have. Okay. So um, just yeah. no. It, it's a, yeah, it's I don't. A nice and, and that's exactly why I don't it's, have it's, the it's answer. It's a vanity because, stat, right? Yeah, exactly. Because it? it's not important, it's not important at yeah. all. <laughs> but what I can say is, you know, the the markets that we serve at the moment. Mm -hmm. So, um, we started off in Kenya in 2014. Yeah. Um, we were an Africa focused brand up until last year. So, okay. in Africa, we currently serve Ghana, Nigeria, Liberia. Uh, Senegal, Cameroon, Ivory Coast, yeah. as well as Uganda and Tanzania. Perfect. I think I think that's all. yeah. And then now we've um, we also uh, expanded into Sri Lanka, okay. uh, Bangladesh, wow. and most recently the Philippines. Wow. And what's your most vibrant market at the moment that you're in? Vibrant. What does that mean? Um, what's like the most popular? Popular. Um, well, our biggest markets. Nigeria. Um, mm, well, not, not necessarily. Mm, you think so? <laughs> mm, I can get into Nigeria, but um, okay. our biggest markets are our most mature markets, which okay. is the likes of Kenya, okay. Ghana as well. Okay. Um, those are the ones so that are because we've been in them yeah. for longest. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Nigeria, um, it's a it's a tricky market at the moment. Well, for, what for you guys or just in general? for the whole industry for the Why whole is... regulated formal industry because. What do you mean by so, tricky? What do you mean by tricky? I mean, I'll tell you because um, yeah, I'll tell you <laughs> because um, the so last year, this mm -hmm. time last year, the Nigerian Central Bank essentially changed um, the rules. Yeah. So before, you know, you could send to send money okay. to Nigeria, and your recipient receive it in naira, which is the normal thing. Yeah. So when I send pounds to mm -hmm. someone in Ghana, they'll receive it in cities, right? Yeah. Um, now the Nigerian Central Bank just said, you know, you can diaspora people can only send money in dollars. Oh yeah, I heard about, I heard about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah they I can only send that. money in dollars, mm. and you can't send it to a mobile wallet. Okay. You can't. They would have to um, send it to the bank okay. and pick up the cash. Um, and so essentially, it just made it really hard for. Um, for people to send money. And is that still the case? Or is that it's still the case. It's still the case. Still the case. Um, it makes a lot of sense. I think the rationale for it is probably because, you know, um, the in terms of the economy, they wanted more foreign uh, currency mm -hmm. in flowing in the economy. But it did make it, um, it just it just made it super hard for, the product wasn't what, isn't what um, diasporas want. They want, it's a, it's, Naira is the the currency in yeah. nigeria so yeah. that's what people want okay. so to have to send money and exchange the dollar into the naira it just you makes lose, it like you lose even more yes yeah. so which means yeah. yes so which means the black market becomes more popular true the likes of semwave and other regulated entities who have to follow this rule mm -hmm. um become less appealing essentially yeah. so which has made sucks. it quite hard for us in nigeria and it's the same for every um, formal every market, yeah. Platform. So that yeah. that's the only reason why I wouldn't say Nigeria is our biggest okay. market, but it's still very significant, obviously. Wow. Okay, yeah. that's quite interesting because I think also, um, I think um, people doing cryptocurrency out there, I think there was a similar impact as well mm. because there yeah. wasn't like they weren't able to kind of like you know do peer to peer and things like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So I think that market also got affected as mm -hmm, well. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's quite interesting. A little bit yeah. of turmoil in Nigeria, but we hope that's gonna hopefully yeah, just improve sure. over time. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, let's talk about you. So what what um do you look after? Is there a specific country that you focus on in your role or Yeah, so role? at the moment um I'm actually looking after or okay. working on Ghana and Kenya. Oh, nice. So looking okay. at our mature markets. Okay. Um, and so I specifically, within the growth team, okay. I specifically work on our high reach media. So that's the likes of radio, um, TV, uh, social media, working with influencers, okay. uh, blogs, etc. Those okay. those types of things. Okay. Okay. So you work those bits. So, so are you more kind of like driving awareness or are you... Are you are you focused on driving awareness like amongst like normal consumers or are you kind of focusing on businesses? Are you more on the B two B side or a bit of both? So, um, Semwave is a peer to peer, -to -peer. Um, product, so yeah. we're not a business product. Okay, um, um, in the sense that 
you may have people that want to do maybe 12 grand, 15 grand at, at a go. I mean, yeah, people maybe use it for what other, whatever reasons, but the product, it, the purpose and what we're regulated for yeah. is peer-to-peer. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the only way we, we market. Okay. Um, but what I would say is, did I think? Yeah, what I was about to say is that um, as a growth team, we're mm-hmm. focused. What we're focused on is uh, new senders. So that's you know the way in which we grow our north star metric, or what we're focused on is mm-hmm. new senders and okay. retention. Okay. Um, and I guess you know for our mature market, um, retention becomes even more important mm-hmm. because we are quite um, you know we we are already quite known in, in the Ghanaian and Kenyan diaspora communities in the US and the UK and Europe. Mm-hmm. And so now it's about, you know, making sure that we retain our users. We, you know, encourage loyalty um, and, you know, we reduce churn, things like that. Okay, cool. Um, I know with acquisition, what's quite popular amongst remittance platforms is the whole promo code thing. I mean, mm-hmm. has that been the popular acquisition strategy for you guys? Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Um, we that's how we work with influencers. That's mm-hmm. how we work with media partners. Um, we offer promo codes um, for um, new senders. Mm-hmm. So we, when we say promo codes, we give credit towards yeah. your very first transfer. Yeah, and that's basically you're basically paying for your for your customer because yeah. once they once they start using the platform, you're gonna hope that they're gonna stay in. Like, exactly, move, exactly. Move, move, they're not gonna move on to another platform mm-hmm. that you know, like me for example. I'm joking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Great. Okay. Cool. So that's how you and how do you guys focus on like just maintaining loyalty and reducing churn amongst? Yeah. Do you know that's a good question and it's yeah. something that um I'm working on and we're still figuring out now. Mm, yeah. Um, must be tough. Man. Yeah. Of course. I mean, international remittances is a, is a interesting market in that ultimately all people care about is price, right? So, yeah. <laughs> um, that's like the main the main thing. So it's about rate. Well, it's also about security True. and the experience that you have. So, yeah. um, you know, as a business, and I, I mentioned to you, the way we make money mm-hmm. to keep our business sustainable is um, making profit off the exchange rate. Yeah. Um, and so although we, ca- we uh, work as hard as possible to be as competitive in the exchange rate we may not always beat um you know our competitors in 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 that realm just because Mm -hmm. of you know the strategy they may take their their strategy may be that they decide that they're going to undercut um whatever um competitors in the market so we also as well as being competitive in our rate we focus on our support make sure that you know the experience is as as effective as possible Mm -hmm. and one thing that i think uh, with some way really distincts us because we've been in this market um quite a long time when i say this market you know uh purely digital yeah. no fee model yeah like Semwave was one of the first to ever to actually you know disrupt in this way oh really uh, yes wow. um so like you know our users really trust us yeah. um they've been with us for a while mm. and although you know other competitors can come and essentially duplicate what we've done yeah. um we have proven that you know we uh, we are mission driven we haven't changed yeah. um and so and also you know people can trust that their money is going to be delivered um mm. so those are the things that we really focus on and and really try and retain i think that's really important and i think we've come full circle to what i was saying that there's so many players well not so many but there's quite a number of players now coming on the market in the remittance space so it's important to have um your usb your, your niche that you can stick yeah with. and social just focusing on the social mission of you know, look, regardless of what happens, I'm not going to charge. We're just going to, you know. Yeah, and that's right. And you know what? That's even a good thing. We see yeah. that as a good thing um, because, like I mentioned to you, it's still the case that it's still so expensive to send to Africa. Yeah. And so, you know, like I said, our mission is to make it as affordable and as easy to send money. Yeah. And so if other competitors are making that so as well, that's great. Of course, we would prefer if you use us. <laughs> um, but we're only scratching the surface on our own. And, and we, even with the competitors that are in the market now, there's really not that much. Yeah. Um, it's still very like... Yeah, like even certain of our competitors are not in the States yet, for example. And the States is the biggest um, uh, remittance, international remittance really? driver from the diaspora. That's right. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's like there's still so much work to do. Um, and so it's great. It's a competitive market. Are you guys in the States yet? Yeah, that's our biggest market. Biggest market. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Okay. And um, what, what was I going to say? Ah. Uh, yeah. So another thing I was going to say is, um, how do you guys? What was it? I just gone completely <laughs> blank. I'm just in a blank 
I'm just having a blank moment. That's cool. Just having a complete blank moment. I was going to ask you something. Um, just going to wait for it to come back to me. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, what markets are you guys looking to, to get into next? That's a good question. We're actually yeah. looking to expand really quickly in the next year. So wow. we're staff, looking to... Yeah. yeah, literally. I think we've doubled the number of staff in the last year. Mm. Um, we're looking to open seven new markets okay. in the next quarter, I think. Ooh, you guys going to raise again? Um, I don't know. You don't know. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. It all depends. I don't on the know. It depends, group. boy. Depends on the parent group. Right? Yeah, no, I'm yeah, for real. Yeah. Um, so that's not really my 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 remit or my okay. paycheck, to be honest. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so I don't know about that. I just do my job. But um, yeah. yeah. So we are gonna expand, um, mostly outside of Africa. Um, although. Um, we may be, I mean, I don't want to say the markets in case it doesn't happen because like yeah. the way in which we expand is like we do research. Um, we kind of do the desktop research and then we do on the ground research. Okay. And that's when we go on the ground, that's when it comes to my team, the growth team. Mm -hmm. And we kind of go out into the communities and really like see if there's a product market fit. Yeah. Um, and we build the product as well as we marketing it because okay. essentially our community informs of us of what they want and of what course, they need yeah. and so often sometimes it doesn't go off the ground okay. like we actually soft launched for example mm -hmm. um we soft launched um in haiti okay um and we were were looking to public launch and really expand there because mm -hmm. obviously it's, it's such a mission alignment yeah. it's still so expensive to send to Haiti and yeah. of course everything that's gone on in the recent years like to really support people in the diaspora to make it easier to send money to their loved ones to, to mm. help them mm -hmm. makes sense however yeah. it just didn't fit with okay. the payment aggregator that we're working with okay. it wasn't a good product market fit for example mm -hmm. so we had to kind of go back to the drawing board that's fine you just um, tested the market quickly and you came back out yeah exactly and right. it may be something we'll be able Absolutely. to do in the future but for right. now it didn't work no. for us and mm -hmm. the way we wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, we don't ever just want to go into a market and, like I said, you know, charge a high fee and then um, just because it works, it works. Yeah. We will only ever go into a market if it's mission aligned. Okay. You know, if we can charge the like least that. or no fee as possible, like if that. it's easy and if it's, you know, uh, sustainable. Yeah. If it's not that, we just won't, we won't be in it. I really love so. that about Sunwave because, I mean... Um, this is what I was going to say earlier on. Like, I mean, the way I kind of see, I could be wrong, but the way sometimes I see some of these remittance platforms is that um, a little bit like how um, you have the, the ride hailing platforms mm. like Uber. Um, Uber, mm. Uber will be established and then Bolt comes along. Here's a promo code. And then Yango comes along. Here's a yeah. promo code. And then Yanko comes along. Here's a promo code. Oh, sh shiny object symbol. Um, si shiny object syndrome. Sh sorry. And I'm just, you know, going after all these different apps and yeah. they're trying to acquire customers with, with price. But regardless of what the competitors are doing, you guys are staying focused on what you guys want to do. Is you're gonna to stick to your mission, and I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for noticing. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. And um, where do you see like um, remittance platforms going in the future? Um, is yeah. that a question or no? It's it's a very good question. Yeah. And it's blockchain something blockchain that yeah. yeah, it's something I even think about as someone in my generation. Mm -hmm. I mean, you and I, we are second generation at this point, right? Mm -hmm. It's our parents who have this sending behavior and this relationship with back home, and our relationship is different. Mm -hmm. Our sending behaviors are going to be different. So eventually, you know, it's not it's not going to be the same thing. Um, so I definitely what I definitely see happening is you know we won't have these apps mm -hmm. just for sending one way. Yeah. There's, it's going to be more dynamic. You know, we, as our generation, we want to do more. Mm -hmm. You know, sending money is great. Like I explained at the beginning, it's a huge source of support. Without it, like many of our economies will cripple. Yeah. But we want more. We want something that could possibly give us returns. We want something that, you know, is a sustainable. Mm -hmm. It isn't just, you know, you send money in a black hole and then that's it. You never see it again. Yeah. We want more of a, like I said, a dynamic relationship. I like that. So I definitely see... What does that look like? Well, what does that look like, though? Because when, when we're using these platforms, I'm just sending money in. Uh -huh. Thank you. But that's it. I've received the money. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. What that's, does I mean, it look like? I mean, for me, that's the customer journey. You send the money, you get, hey, yeah. the, and then you get a notification. The person yeah, that's it, because that's what people want right now. Yeah, that's yeah. what, and it does the job. And so what I'm trying to say mm. is that, yeah, I mean, for me, on my end, that's the customer journey. But then what does, you want to be more than just like 
being a platform which facilitates, you know, remittance and you want to kind of like um, be the social conscious. Yeah, to be honest, I don't have the the direct answer to what that looks like. I think everybody's still trying to figure that out. What that looks like. Um, But I definitely see it changing. I don't see it being replaced. Absolutely not. There will always be a use for this type of sending, a use for this type of payments. Yeah. Absolutely I just see other things complementing it, okay. and us and it growing and being more dynamic, essentially. Okay. And you'll be you, it'll be interesting in the next year to you know the news that may come out about what what other um, what companies even the likes of Semway have planned. Yeah. So definitely stay tuned for that and look into this market. It's, it is very interesting. Okay, and you guys thinking of pivoting into any kind of similar platform, similar similar types of markets or platforms, or you're just gonna focus on being remittance for the meantime. Who knows? I don't okay. know. All right. Cool. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stay tuned and find yeah. out. Um, your podcast, quickly, Diaspora Talks. I love it. I know you've done a couple of seasons. Um, yeah. What's been one of the, the highlights, um, one of your favourite episodes that you've done? Yeah, no, that's, a, that's a really good question. Yeah. Um, so, like you explained at the beginning, mm-hmm. um, I started Diaspora Talks actually... Um, so I, I started blogging at first mm-hmm. about, um, you know, Africa tech, entrepreneurship for people like us, for people in the diaspora, just because I wanted to learn more and know more. And I couldn't really see anything out there that could inform me mm-hmm. um, as someone in the diaspora, like a young professional. Like I could turn on the business news for the States or Asia or whatever, but I, I wasn't really seeing anything that really talked to me. Yeah. So I started to do my own research and find out about entrepreneurs that were doing really cool things. Yeah. And then I started sharing it. Um, mm. And then I found this like whole world of like all of this stuff, essentially. Yeah. Um, and then I moved into podcasts because that was like the next big thing. It was, it was a, And it was a lot more dynamic way to have engaging conversations with yeah. people, as you know. Yeah, um, so... Diaspora Talks, yes. So it, like you mentioned, connecting and bridging the gap between African founders um, and, you know, players with people in the diaspora, just telling their stories yeah. um, from the horse's mouth, essentially. Yeah. Um, and so my favourite episodes, I mean, it's a mixture when it comes to, like, speaking to founders and entrepreneurs. Mm. I actually did, off the top of my head, I actually did a interview with the Afrochella founders, like, okay. two years ago or so, back in 2019. I think there's another one this year in Ghana, I think. Yes. Be... I did not expect that. Oh, my goodness. Well, you didn't expect it. Everything's kind of <laughs> opening up this year, yeah, so, yeah. It's yeah. going to be rammed. <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it'll be hella rammed, yeah. I don't think Ghana can... I don't think Ghana um, was ready for the last year. The return. 20... Yeah. They weren't ready because the amount of traffic that entered the country... Yeah, Listen, anyway, I, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's, that's a whole other thing. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I interviewed them, and uh-huh. I, I just loved their story because it was just cool how, like... Excuse me, they started off like doing events in New York and the States and then like came together and was like, you know, experienced Christmas in December and just was like, you know what, like there's something missing. Yeah. let's come together and do something and then just mm-hmm. hearing their like stories of knocking on people's door trying to get this wow. festival off the ground waiting hours for door somebody to, door, to come like, yeah you know how, gor- how Ghana gorilla, is gorilla gorilla wow yeah so, so like you never really hear these <laughs> stories you just see like the finished product right you just hear yeah. oh my god Africa is lit you just see all this stuff and all these celebrities coming but really there's a lot of grind that goes into it and that's the kind of stuff that I love just hearing about like not the struggle stories but you know like the real right um and i love it because it really just shows to people just like us like yeah like Mm -hmm. i'm just like you yeah just a little bit of grit and determination Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and also giving some like pointers and and you know some um direction because it can feel so vague and like how did you do it and people just give some rubbish like vague stuff and theories you can tell they're passionate yeah like you know yeah. So, um, and yes, I always like to ask for advice at the end for people in the diaspora, and that's the kind of thing that we talk about. Okay. Um, yeah. So I think that. That's wow. It. No, that's, that's that's quite something. I have, I actually admire some of the guests that you've had. Um, I think Mika Abraham was one of your guests. If I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I, had I did. On my show. I stole that from you. <laughs> no, she's great. So I did like a year of return recap episode. Yeah, that, had, yeah, that was the episode. Yeah, yeah. And that was a, a good people. one. I think you inspired me to, to to do my own Aww. kind of version of bringing different people on the one. Yeah, one oh, that, that means a lot because you yeah. definitely done more than me, boy. I have not had time. <laughs> it's so. all good. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. It's so that good. was a good episode. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I've been impressed. Um. Any, Bobby? Would you Would you do one when you get more time? 
Yeah, no, another honestly. Season, yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely hoping to do another season soon. God okay. willing, I have the strength yeah, and, and time. Um, but yeah, I definitely want to do that. I mean, there's still so many stories to tell and like yeah. so many entrepreneurs doing really cool things. Yeah. Aside from that, just having like conversations that are really close to the heart of people in the diaspora. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that that's definitely something I'm hoping to do um, probably in the new year. Can't wait for that. CNN African Voices, is that a show that you've come across before? Mm, yeah, I think I've heard of it, but I've okay. never engaged. Check it out because it's, you know how you said you're looking for this kind of, you know. Oh, yeah, nowadays there's so much. There's so much, yeah. yeah but CNN, I mean, CNN African Voice is something that my dad put me on. Okay. And that really inspired me. Amazing. Yeah, so maybe you can check oh, it out. Cool. In your own Thank time. you. Really, really like spot on, like the kind of content that you're looking for. Um, another thing I wanted to say also is I know you're quite, you know, clued up in the tech space. Um, are there any kind of like African startups or scale ups that, that um that have got your attention at the moment? Yeah, I mean, um, I definitely try to keep up to date on things. I think for me, because I work in a fintech space, mm-hmm. um, I'm most interested in fintech. Yeah. Um, and fintech is when it comes to technology in Africa, that's the biggest industry. It's everything, because yeah. not, not many people have like their own bank accounts and cars. Yeah, so there's so much disruption and yeah. there's so much space for it. Yeah. Um, it's like a blank slate. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's so many interesting uh, startups that are coming out of the continent, especially from Nigeria. Yeah, oh, yeah Nigeria is probably yeah. like, have their, our version of Silicon Valley right now. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Lagos is. Um, so we saw like the first uh, African unicorn coming out mm-hmm. of um, Nigeria. Mm-hmm. Um, the first like uh, international acquisition as well with like some pays that flow wave yeah. etc so those and it's all fintech mm. so and that industry is, is really yeah it's just so exciting at the moment yeah. like I think it's what's even more cool is that you know when we see acquisitions when we see unicorn raises it means even more because Mm. in the African on the African continent it's hard to understand you know whether you can place your bet on it because yeah. there's so obviously there's so many challenges Tons. and so like people don't know okay is, am I going to get a return yeah. but obviously when you're seeing this type of activity yeah. it does show you yeah there is definitely like dynamic it's not just just not just not talk basically um, so yeah I think fintech's really interesting really cool space mm. <clears throat> As well as that, I think agri-tech is really cool as well, just because, yeah, you know, we're talking about like Africa, which mm. is, there's so much arable land, like, there's so much scope for it, mm. um, but still it's so underutilised. And there's just, yeah. like, quite a few companies um, that are trying to disrupt the space. And I think it's quite cool. There's just so much, there's just there's so, so much, much to do. Yeah. Yeah, like um, the line. I mean, yeah. And even the food and the economics, the food and the e-commerce space, like food, food delivery. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, they're just, me up. Yeah. There's so much. There's so much. So that's much. a whole other episode. Mm-hmm. I'll have to find someone that does food and e-commerce next. Yeah, no, yeah. so much. And that's why I was saying to you, even like with remittances, you yeah. can break it down and then you can break it down again. There's just yeah. so much there's to so talk much, about. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what I would say, I'll just plug myself just one time, oh, is that um, as well as the podcast, I yeah. do have a weekly newsletter okay. where I do highlight, um, you know, um, the latest in Africa tech news. Okay. So it's subscribe. like, you know, yeah, definitely subscribe. Yeah. Um, it's on my page. Okay. Um, so, you know, you'll just see, you know, who's raised that week, what acquisitions are happening, okay. what the latest news um, in the tech scene in general, what, nice. what's the latest startups, any events as well. Okay. So, yeah. It's like a weekly, okay. weekly, 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 like every Tuesday morning in your inbox. Okay, cool. So, <laughs> okay, you're consistent with that. I'm looking forward to checking cool. it out. <laughs> cool. um, yeah, um, I think um, we're going to bring this to a close now. Um, I think we've covered every, pretty much everything. Um, before I bring this to a close, um, this is something I ask my guests. Um, so if someone mentions Accra to you, what thoughts, feelings, vibes come to mind? Just to around them off the off the cuff off the, off, on the top traffic of and heat, <laughs> <laughs> but on a positive note, just vibes like just vibes yeah. for me. Um, being in Ghana and just you know being around my people, you know, and just having that feeling is is always amazing. And yeah, yeah I think I think that's just vibes. Awesome, yeah. All right. Um, and where can people find you or? Buffalo Senway. Yeah, so uh, for me personally, um, I'm on all socials. Annette Abena. Okay. It's A double N E double T E Abena. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, for Senwave, I mean, if you have any 
other questions about SEMWAVE, how to use SEMWAVE, mm-hmm. um, just more about the business, I'm always open to chatting and talking you through it. You can email me at annette at semwave.com. Perfect. Cool. We'll have everything in the show notes at the sound of a crowd dot com forward slash. I like it. There you go. You got it. I did that <laughs> l- l- my last show. <laughs> I was like, really? back at me. <laughs> <laughs> now, now you got it. So well done. Yeah. Sound of crowd dot com forward slash Annette. You can find all of the um, show notes there. Um, and now you've been a fantastic guest. Thank, Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Until next time. Um, peace. Take care.